86 earthquakes in just seven days. That's one tremor every two hours beneath the most dangerous volcanic system in Europe. While you're watching this video right now, seismographs in southern Italy are recording another microquake under the homes of half a million people. Mm. This isn't a disaster movie. This is Campi Flegre in December 2025, and the ground won't stop moving. Imagine waking up at one in the morning to your bed shaking, your walls cracking, your children crying in the next room. This happened to thousands of families in Pazualai just nine months ago, when a magnitude 4.4 earthquake struck at 1.25 a.m. on March 13th. Dozens of families still haven't returned home. Their buildings are too damaged, too dangerous. Mizavios, Ders. And since that night, the earthquakes haven't stopped. They've accelerated. Right now, beneath the picturesque bay of Naples, beneath ancient Roman ruins and bustling fish markets, beneath schools and hospitals, and the homes of 500,000 residents, something is stirring. The ground has risen 21.5 centimeters this year alone. That's the height of a brick. 21 centimeters of pure geological force pushing an entire city upward. ND with every millimeter of uplift comes another swarm of earthquakes. Another sleepless night for families in Pozuolo Li, Vodna Another crack in another building. But here's what makes this week different. Here's why scientists at the Vesuvius Observatory are watching their seismographs with growing concern. The earthquake count for December 15th to 21st was 76 tremors. The very next week, 86. 86. Activity didn't just continue, it intensified. And buried in the seismogram data is a pattern that reveals exactly why Campi Flegre won't stop shaking and why the next earthquake could be bigger than anything we've seen in decades. Ah, this is not about fear. This is not about fear. This is about understanding a geological process that could reshape one of Europe's most densely populated regions. By the end of this video, you'll see the hidden fault structure that artificial intelligence just revealed beneath Pozzuoli. You'll understand why two major earthquake swarms hit within four days of each other. You'll hear what the seismograms are actually telling us about the pressure building underground. Stay with me, because what's happening at Campi Flegre right now is being called the most significant volcanic unrest event in modern European history. And the data we're seeing this week suggests we're entering a critical new phase. Let's start with the raw data, because the numbers from this past week are extraordinary. Between December 22nd and December 29th, seismic monitoring stations recorded 86 separate earthquakes beneath the Campi Flegre caldera. Boo. These weren't random tremors scattered across southern Italy. Every single one originated from a concentrated zone less than three kilometers beneath the town of Pozzuoli. The magnitudes ranged from 0.1 to 2.0 on the Richter scale. Most were micro-earthquakes, barely perceptible to residents above. But here's the critical detail seismologists focus on. It's not the size of individual quakes that matters most. It's the frequency. It's the clustering. It's the relentless mechanical rhythm of the Earth, adjusting to forces building underground. Compare this to the previous week. December 15th to 21st recorded 76 earthquakes. Before that, 34. We're watching exponential growth in seismic activity over a three-week period. But the story gets more specific when we zoom into two particular events. Two earthquake swarms that tell us exactly where the pressure is concentrating. The first swarm began at 7.47 a.m. on December 15th. Within hours, five distinct earthquakes rattled the Pozzuoli area. Mm, the largest measured magnitude 1.9. Residents described a rolling sensation, like standing on a boat in choppy water. Glasses rattled in cafes. Shopkeepers steadied products on shelves. Then, as quickly as it started, 
the swarm stopped. Vor 42 a.m. Most of Pozzuoli was asleep when the second swarm struck. Five earthquakes in rapid succession. The strongest reached magnitude 2.0. This time, the epicenter clustered around the Pozzuoli Sigliano neighborhood, barely two kilometers from the city center. Emergency phone lines lit up within minutes. Residents who'd grown accustomed to minor tremors were now calling authorities in genuine concern. Why? Because these weren't isolated events anymore. These were swarms. Cascading sequences where one earthquake triggers the next. And the next. Like dominoes falling through fractured rock. And here's the question seismologists are asking right now. Why did two major swarms occur exactly four days apart? What changed underground between December 15th and December 19th that caused the same fault zone to rupture twice in less than a week? Let me show you what scientists see when they analyze earthquake data from Campi Flegre. Every tremor generates waves that travel through rocks. At this, these waves are recorded by seismograph stations positioned throughout the caldera. The closest station, called STH, sits near the Solfatara crater, right at the heart of the unrest zone. When an earthquake occurs, the seismograph needle jumps. The size of that jump tells us magnitude. The duration of the shaking tells us depth. And the pattern of waves reveals something even more important. It tells us whether this is a tectonic earthquake caused by plates grinding together or a volcanic earthquake caused by fluids and gases pushing through fractured rock. Campi Flegre's earthquakes are distinctly volcanic. They're shallow, typically between 0.77 kilometers and 2.97 kilometers deep. They occur in swarms rather than main shock aftershock sequences. Here's where it gets fascinating. When researchers animate the seismogram data from December 15th and 19th, you can actually see the swarm behavior in real time. The first quake hits. Three minutes later, another. Seven minutes after that, a third. The intervals shorten. The magnitudes fluctuate. The then, after the fifth or sixth tremor, the sequence stops as suddenly as it began. This is called a cascading process. One fracture in the rock relieves pressure in one location, but transfers stress to another. That new stress point fractures. More stress transfers. The cycle continues until the local rock reaches a new equilibrium. Then silence, until pressure builds again. Now, ask yourself that if 86 earthquakes occurred in the past seven days, and each one represents a fracture event underground, how much total rock volume has failed beneath Pozuoli this week alone? And more importantly, what happens when that fractured rock can't absorb any more pressure? But earthquakes are only half the story. The other half is happening in slow motion, measured in millimeters per month. Bradicism, the gradual rising and falling of the Earth's surface. This year alone, the ground has risen 21.5 centimeters. That's not a crack in your sidewalk. That's an entire city being pushed upward by forces we can barely comprehend. The monitoring station at Rioni Terra, right in the historic center of Pozzuoli, measures this movement with millimeter precision. The uplift rate has stabilized at 25 millimeters per month since October. 25 millimeters every single month. Dele. That might sound slow, but geological processes don't work on human timescales. This is catastrophically fast for a volcanic system. And here's what makes Bradicism so dangerous. It's not smooth. The ground doesn't rise like an elevator. It rises in jerks and pulses, each one accompanied by earthquake swarms. Now let me ask you something. If your home was rising two and a half centimeters every single month, hmm, would you stay? Would you trust that the walls could handle that stress indefinitely? Thousands of families in Pozzuoli are asking themselves that exact question right now. For decades, the assumption was simple. Magma rising from deep underground pushes the surface up. 
more magma equals more uplift equals higher eruption risk. But recent research has completely changed that understanding. A groundbreaking study published in December 2025 revealed something unexpected. The earthquakes at Campi Flegre are not governed by time. They're governed by cumulative uplift. The crust can absorb a certain amount of strain. But once that threshold is crossed, fractures multiply. Earthquakes intensify. And here's the critical part. The system becomes progressively less efficient at releasing pressure. We may be entering that later phase right now. 21.5 centimeters of cumulative uplift in one year. 86 earthquakes in one week. The math is undeniable. Pressure is building faster than the rock can safely release it, but it gets even more complex. The real culprit isn't magma, it's water. Superheated hydrothermal fluids rising from deep underground. Stanford University researchers used artificial intelligence to analyze Campi Flegre's seismic data and those earthquakes revealed hidden fault structures. Two major faults converging directly beneath Pozzuoli in a ring-like formation. These faults were always there, but we couldn't see them clearly until AI mapped every microquake with precision. Here's the question that keeps volcanologists awake at night. Could Campi Flegre produce a magnitude 5 earthquake? The answer, according to Stanford's lead researcher, is not out of the question. A magnitude 5 at shallow depth beneath a densely populated city would cause catastrophic damage. Buildings would collapse. Infrastructure would fail and half a million people would need immediate evacuation. The Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology operates a red phone, a direct line to Rome's emergency headquarters. That phone is tested twice every single day. Why? Because when the big one hits, there won't be time for meetings or bureaucracy. Decisions will need to be made in minutes. Right now, Campi Flegre remains at yellow alert status, but thresholds exist. If uplift accelerates beyond certain rates, if earthquake magnitudes cross specific values, if gas emissions spike dramatically, the alert level changes. Hmm. Duh. The next seven days will be critical. Will we see another 86 earthquakes? Will the swarms grow larger? Will the ground rise another two centimeters? Scientists are watching. The seismographs are recording. And half a million people are living directly above the answer. If you want to stay updated on Campi Flegre's activity as it unfolds, hit that subscribe button right now. Because this story is far from over. And the data we see next week could change everything.